Hey, this is Mr. Aiden, and this is a physics honors video on reflection, refraction, and diffraction, so let's get to it. Um, when a wave hits a boundary, there's three things that can occur. Uh, number, number one, the wave can reflect, and so it can bounce off. Uh, another thing it can transmit, uh, as, we tran as we take a look at transmitting, we're going to take a look at things like refraction and diffraction. It can also absorb, so uh, think about the atmosphere, think about a leaf, all those colors will absorb of the colors of white light, and what you will see is only one color that has been reflected off. And so we're going to first take a look at what's called the law of reflection. And the law of reflection says the angle at which a wave strikes a reflective medium is equal to the angle at which it reflects off that medium. And something that I want you to see is uh, we have what's called an incident ray. The ray that's coming in is called the incident ray. And so the angle that comes in is called the angle of incidence. And that angle of incidence uh, is between the incident ray and the normal. It's not between the reflecting surface and the incident ray. It's between the incident ray and the perpendicular line, which we call the normal line. And that angle of incidence is equal to what's called the angle of reflection. And that angle is equal to one another. And that ray that gets reflected off is obviously called a reflective ray. And so that's called the law of reflection. We also have refraction. Refraction is when one wave, when a wave bounces, passes from one medium into another medium, that wave can refract or what we call bend. And in the new medium, the speed and the wavelength change. The speed, like let's say it goes to a more a, a denser medium like uh, quartz or water, from air to quartz or air to water that speed is actually going to get less, that wavelength is actually going to get less, but the frequency stays constant. The frequency stays constant. It does not change from one medium to the next. Uh, we also have a thing called the index of refraction. You can see our equation here for the index of refraction. Our, uh, our variable for the index of refraction is this n, and n is equal to the speed of light, that's c, over the velocity, or the wavelength in air over the wavelength in medium because obviously the frequency stays the same. The frequency is canceled out. So I want to show you two different problems here. Let's take a look at if we know that water has an n of 1.33 and, and that's why that uh, you're, when you're standing in a pool your feet look uh, it doesn't look like your lower half of your body is as long as it should be. Um, your feet look kind of weird and that's because that light is traveling from air into water and so the index refraction is 1.33 and so we have n e equals c over v we have 1.33 equals c we know what c is it's 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second over the velocity now if you're ever trying to find the, the, the thing on the denominator you're going to swip swap out so that means the velocity is going to be 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second over the index of refraction of 1.33, and that ends up giving me a velocity of 2.26 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. Keep in mind that velocity can never be bigger or faster than three times 10 to the eighth. It's always gonna be less than. Uh, let's take a look at another problem. We know that, that in quartz, the velocity of the light is gonna be moving at 2.05 times 10 to the eighth, which means we can know the n. The n is three times 10 to the eighth meters per second over 2.05 uh, times 10 to the eighth meters per second. And we divide those two and we get an n of 1.46. You're never gonna get an n number less than one because the n is always gonna be greater than one. The n of air is equal to one, okay? Because uh, the speed of light is roughly going the exact same speed in air. It's it's uh, or a vacuum. A vacuum would be 1.00. We can assume that air is 1.00. I think it's 1.003, but we can just assume it's 1.00, which means the n is always going to be greater than one for that index of refraction. Okay. Uh, diffraction. The last thing we'll take a look is diffraction is when a wave spreads out when passing through an obstacle or a slit. And so what we see when it spreads out is that you could be standing 
you could be standing not in the direct sight of sound or the direct sight of, of light, but you can still see it because those waves spread outwards and they don't just pass straight through. And so that's why we see this interaction uh, of a wave when we have a boundary here. So that was reflection, refraction, and diffraction. Don't forget to go to mysteryden.com and finish the self-assessment on reflection, refraction, and diffraction. So go to mysteryden.com, complete that self-assessment. Have a good day. I'll talk to you in the next video. Thanks.